The US is aware when and how Israel will respond to Iran's missile strike, US President Joe Biden told reporters ahead of his departure to Germany. Asked whether the US is aware of what response Israel will provide and when it will take respective measures, Biden said yes and yes. Biden declined to share any details regarding Israel's planned response to the October 1st missile attack, though his remarks appeared to mark the first time the US indicated it has reached an understanding with Israel on the nature of the retaliation. Asked by reporters about the prospects of Middle East peace, Biden said he sees an opportunity that we can probably deal with Israel and Iran in a way that ends the conflict for a while, stops the back and forth. We think that there's a possibility of working for a ceasefire in Lebanon. It's going to be harder in Gaza, but we agree that there has to be an outcome. What happens in the days after? The president added without elaborating why he thought this way. On October the 1st, the Islamic Republic launched a massive missile attack against the Jewish state in response to the killing of senior officials from the Palestinian movement Hamas, the Lebanon-based Shia movement Hezbollah and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Tehran said that 90% of the missiles hit their designated targets. Israel, in turn, said that Iran had fired some 180 missiles into the country, most of which were intercepted. The Israeli general staff vowed to choose the right moment to surprise Iran with a counterattack. Israel has decided on the targets it could potentially strike in Iran, according to Israeli television reports. According to Channel 12 News, the military presented a list of targets to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant as it finalizes preparations, which include sensitive coordination with other countries in the region. A report by the Khan public broadcaster said the political echelon had decided on the targets without specifying which officials or decision-making forum. The targets are clear. Now it's a matter of time, an Israeli source told the broadcaster. A fast-moving brush fire has prompted an evacuation of an Oakland neighborhood and damaged at least four structures. At least 80 firefighters were battling the eight-acre blaze in the Oakland Hills and state crews have arrived to help, the Oakland Fire Department said. Video recorded by the fire shows helicopters dousing the flames. The fire comes as forecasters have issued red flag warnings for fire danger until Saturday from the central coast through the San Francisco Bay Area and into northern Shasta County, not far from the Oregon border. It was not immediately clear what caused the Oakland blaze. The fire department ordered people in two streets, Campus Drive and Crystal Ridge Court, to evacuate. No injuries have been reported. A California utility shut off power in 19 counties in the northern and central part of the state as a major, Diablo wind, notorious in autumn for its hot, dry gusts spiked the risk of power lines sparking a wildfire. About 16,000 customers were without electricity Friday after Pacific Gas and Electric shut off power. The Diablo wind is forecast to cause sustained winds reaching 35 miles per hour in many areas, with possible gusts topping 65 miles per hour along mountaintops, according to the National Weather Service. The strong winds are expected to last through part of the weekend.
Germany honored U.S. President Joe Biden for his contribution to transatlantic relations on Friday, ahead of his meetings with European allies on Russia's war in Ukraine and the conflict in the Middle East. Biden received the highest class of Germany's Order of Merit, which was also bestowed on former U.S. President George Bush for his support of German reunification. German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier pointed to Biden's interest in Germany going back more than four decades. He said the friendship with the U.S. is and will always be existentially important for Germany, but there have always been times of proximity and greater distance. Even recently, just a handful of years ago, the distance had grown so wide that we almost lost each other, Steinmeier said, in an allusion to tense relations during Trump's earlier presidency. He said Biden restored Europe's hope in the transatlantic alliance literally overnight. Biden thanked German leaders for their role in helping Ukraine against the Russian invasion. We cannot let up, he said. We must sustain our support, in my view, we must keep going until Ukraine wins a just and durable peace. Biden didn't want his term to end without visiting Berlin, after having been to visit other key allies such as Japan, South Korea, France, India, the United Kingdom, Poland and Ukraine. Biden plans to meet later Friday with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Biden and Scholz will later meet with French President Emmanuel Macron and UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer before the US President jets home late Friday afternoon. Biden and Scholz plan to discuss next steps in Ukraine and developments in Israel and Gaza after the killing of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar. They also intend to touch on Lebanon and Iran, and coordinate their approaches to China as well as their respective industrial and innovation strategies. The pair are also set to talk about the development of artificial intelligence and renewable energy resources.